Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're working on this, uh, I think it's a 98 case 1845C skid steer. And what's happened with this machine is we have lost pretty much all movement on the left side. It does not want to move front or backwards. And the right side is very weak as well. What we deem that to be is the hydraulic pump. So in the beginning here, obviously I skipped a little bit, but we're all right. we've already pulled the lines off. Working on getting this thing on out of there. There's actually three bolts to hold this thing in. So there's going to be two at the back, back there, which you can see we're removing right now. And there's going to be one more up towards the front, which is almost just a little L bracket that comes from it down to the bottom of the machine. Basically take those out and you're ready to pull the pump. So at this point, once you get these three bolts out and all your hydraulic lines removed, don't forget these two little sensors here on the side. Those are actually for the backup beeper on the machine. Our machine, it's broken off of. I don't know what happened there, to be honest with you, but it's broke off. Regardless, make sure you remove those. Something I will say, and I'll show this in a little while too. You'll see how I have some of these lines capped with the JIC fittings. That was because I just ordered a kit of JIC fittings to try to do this job with and it didn't really come with all of them that you needed because I needed like a whole bunch of number 16s but just you can use gloves and zip ties and it works just as good yeah. I actually found that almost better because I can send that with the pump to the machine shop okay. or to the hydraulic shop all right so we were able to get it out we we're gonna try to use this but uh the cylinder went bad and we tried to fix it but we couldn't get anything else it's only like 75 bucks though, so I think I'm just gonna buy a new cylinder for it and then that'll be fixed. Okay, so pump is back from machine shop, as you can see. I replaced the ram on the engine hoist, so now it actually does engine hoist things. We're gonna get this thing set back in here. The hydraulic shop lost one of our lines, so we gotta figure that out. But yeah, we're gonna get it set back in here. So getting it out is pretty much just as easy as it is to get it back in. We're just gonna kind of drop it down here now something that I did have to fight with for a minute or two was the u-joint uh, this this little drive shaft right here that goes between the motor and the pump there is a u-joint in there and I recommend replacing it while you're in there if yours is bad mine was in really really good shape it needed some grease I put some grease on it but other than that it looked really fine so I left it um we are running AW68 hydraulic fluid in this, and there's a debate over that. This is what the machine shop recommended for these machines, and for this design style pump, because they say that what Case runs from the factory is just obsolete with the 10W30 motor oil and the Case HTO additive, which is unavailable pretty much. We were able to get our hands on some, but it was very difficult. And we we had to drive, I think, two hours away just to get some of it. Regardless, uh, get the pump back in. We have uh, pretty much got it bolted in at this point. I sped this video up a lot because theirs was a really long clip. But there's a lot of good stuff in here that, that you can see we're doing. Getting this front mount on is was kind of tedious. We battled with it for a minute or two because for some reason it wasn't lining up. I don't remember exactly what it was, but um, yeah, we're going to be moving on to the hydraulic lines now. So while the pump was being rebuilt, we had the same hydraulic shop making two new hoses for us that were a little bit shorter because if you can see, I don't, I guess you can see up here where the drive motor goes across right there at the top where that seat bolts down, it was actually rubbing right there and it caused a hole in one of the lines so we were having them shortened so they wouldn't hit right there and they ended up losing one of them so when I finally got those back after I don't know it was several days maybe even a week I did not pull out my camera and hit record so I don't have anything else going forward so I do have when it was finished and I'm gonna let those clips play from here okay so new pump got installed we had a problem with it starting, so we had bought this new solenoid because we had problems out of it. And well, it 
worked to start it that one time, but it was pulling forward and out of adjustment and all that, and I was dealing with several other things, so I forgot to get the camera out. But anyway, we replaced that, and then we ended up having to order a starter for it. But it runs good now. Everything works like it's supposed to. I did just notice that there is a thing loose back here. That little, there's supposed to be, this is supposed to be bolted right here. And I don't really know why it's not. So I'll have to get that resolved. But yeah, it's been, it's been operating pretty good. I have not used the auxiliary on this machine yet because I don't have anything that runs off auxiliary. All I have is that bucket on these forks. Um, and we're in the process of putting this up. There's no videos on this thing because it has just been one setback after another setback and we're finally getting it put up now. But yeah, we spent forever trying to get this concrete and this grading done. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of big things coming in the future. We also have videos coming over that um, and probably that and that. And then there's the F100 still. So there's plenty of projects here that we've picked up over the <laughs> over the year that I've been missing. But um, yeah, guys, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching us install that pump. I hope you took something from it. And I will see you guys next time.